<laughs> Good morning, Mount Tabor. Good morning. Here, yeah, let me do that one more game. Good morning, Mount Tabor. Good morning. To all of our uh, folks who are watching us on YouTube and Facebook this morning. As songwriter said, just another day's journey. Uh -huh. Yeah, and I'm glad about it. All right. I, I, I'm, I'm especially glad this morning because uh, my, my, one of my brothers in the ministry said, Here, here's the reason why you ought to be glad, because he woke you up this morning. All right. that, 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 that's, a, that's a good reason to be glad. Uh -huh. And then he said, if you really, really, really need another reason why to be glad, he, he woke you up this morning. All right. All right. Yeah, then, then, then he was going to say, now, now if, if I didn't find your address, All right. uh, he, he'll say, he woke you up this morning. All right. and, and, and if you know that you are alive and God has given you breath in your body, mm -hmm. uh, as, as the scripture said, the songwriter said in Psalm 150, verse 6, let everything that yeah. have breath. All right. All right. Praise the Lord. Why don't we just give God some praise this morning? Yeah, it, 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 is, it, it is cold out there. Lord have mercy for those who are elsewhere other than where we are at. I know if my sister is watching from Indianapolis, I know it's cold there, but well. but, but there's an old saying, Pee Wee, the, some old folks used to say, and I'm about ready to get myself in trouble. They say it's colder than a well digger, you got the rest of it. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold out there. <laughs> <laughs> But we come to lift up the name of Jesus. Right. I'm getting ready to get out of the way. We're going to bring forth um, a choir, a praise ministry. Um, and then we're going to have our uh, scripture and prayer. Um, our chairman of our deacons, Deacon Bob Broden. And then uh, uh, announcements by Sister Diane Robinson. I got a couple of uh, observations to make. Then we gonna we gonna go on and just do let the choir do what the choir knows how to do. Amen. Amen. So come on, let's let's go on and let's praise God this morning. All right. Amen. Amen.
Brother, my heart desires and prayer to God for Israel's ears uh -huh. that they might be saved. Yes. But it bears the record that they have the zeal of God, mm -hmm. but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness and have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes it. For Moses described as the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speak on this wise. Say not unto thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That you bring Christ up from above. And who shall descend into the deep, which is to bring Christ up from the dead? But what saith it? The word is not thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Romans chapter 10, verse 1 to 8. May God bless the reader and hear his holy word. Our Father, we come this morning. Thank you for your beautiful blessing. Thank you, God, for this day. We thank you, God, that we, we uh, as your children, have to learn to accept the bitter with the sweet. We can't just accept your blessing, oh God, and not uh, accept your chest time when you back and forth us. We ask you, God, bless this serve today. And may, oh God, may it be pleasing in your sight. We pray, oh God, for those that are sick, those the Lord in the hospital, those the Lord that in places that don't know where they are. But we thank you, God, for having a mind and a will and a to come to worship thee. Yes. We realize, Lord oh God, there's nothing that we can do without yes. you. We ask you, God, to bless our pastor today as he brings the word. Uh, yes. Lord, let it be something that would help us to go to the rest of the week. Mm -hmm. Let it be something, oh Lord, to correct us, direct us, and guide us out of the way of harm's way. Yes. Then, God, when we, like all other people, had come to the end of this journey, mm -hmm. we want you to say, well done. Well done. Well done. Yes. That good and faithful servant. Been faithful over a few things. Come on up, how I make you rule over many. These are all the best in Jesus Christ's name. We pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is our announcement for the week. Bible study will continue this Wednesday, February 10th at 11 a.m. And we would really love for you to join us. Here are two quick steps to connect. Dial area code 978-990-5000. Enter the access code 218-210 followed by the hashtag or pound sign. Now we're going to turn it to our pastor for further observations. Amen. Let me say good morning once again. Good morning. Amen. Again, this is a good day. Yes. Amen. It's cold out there. Yes, Lord. But I'm seeing the sun is shining. Yes, sir. And that's, that's, that's good. Yeah. We've been under uh, clouds, clouds throughout the whole week. Mm -hmm. uh, but the other blessing that I looked at initially forecast called for up to three inches of snow. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I don't know about anybody else, but uh, Sister Darlene, I, I really was praying. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm not laughing, but I'm serious. I was praying and said, Lord, I, I, want, I, want, to go, I want to be a church on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. I really did. That was my prayer. Lord, I want to be a church on Sunday. Plus, I talked to Dean Broke. I said, the way my, where my house is, our drive is on a slight incline. And uh, I said, I ain't getting out there shoveling no snow. <laughs> that, 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 that ain't going to, that, that, that's, that's not going to happen. Right. But the Lord was kind to us. Yeah. And um, here we are at church one more time. Let me give these quick observations because this morning it is Communion Sunday. Amen. For those who of you are at home, uh, because you may not have a, a wafer, and the juice, um, you, you can get you a little, just a little piece of bread. Uh, you get you some gospel Kool-Aid. Uh, if you don't have that, uh, get you uh, some 
grape juice or some kind of juice or even nothing else in water. Don't let that stop you from taking communion. All right. uh, also, by uh, way of observation, we know uh, the 1st of February on the calendar is designated uh, as Black History Month. Yes. Yeah. 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 And I say all the time, uh, Black History Month for me is 365 right. days. Amen. Right. Amen. 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 We, we live black history every day yeah, yeah. of the week. Mm -hmm. uh, I should say every day of the year we yeah, live yeah, yeah. black Amen. history. Uh, and I'm not going to put a month on there. We live black history yeah, yeah. Yeah. because we are black yeah. history. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. So let me let me do this uh, something that I was uh, came across. Uh, it said in 1976 Every year thereafter, February became the official month where people in the United States celebrated the achievement in history of African Americans as part of Black History Month. I already told you I celebrate 365 days. Uh, but it goes on to say that it is during this month where honor and recognition of all black people from all periods of U.S. history from the enslaved people first brought over from Africa in the early 17th century to African Americans living in the United States today. Among the notable figures, and there are thousands of them, but among the notable figures often highlighted during Black History Month is the late Dr. Martin Luther King, who fought for equal rights for blacks during the 50s and the 60s. Thurgood Marshall, the first African-American justice appointed to the United States Supreme Court in 1967. Mae Jemison, who became the first female African-American astronaut to travel to space in 1992. Senator Barack Obama uh, from Illinois, who was elected the first ever African-American president of these United States in 2008, Senator Kamala Harris, the first ever elected African-American female as vice president in 2020. Retired four-star Army General uh, Lloyd Austin, who was nominated by President Joe Biden and confirmed by the U.S. Senate as the first ever African American to lead the Department of Defense. Amen. And then there's a fellow by the name of Michael Regan, um, who has been nominated to head the Environmental Protection Agency. Amen. Once confirmed, he will be the first ever African American uh, man uh, to run the EPA. Amen. So we as a people, we have great cause to applaud and appreciate Amen. one another. Amen. The African American church and the hundreds of thousands of African American men and women who have paved the way for all Americans. So uh, let me close uh, with that by saying this. Every day, you ought to give yourself a, a, a pat on the back. Amen. Every day, give yourself a pat on the back. And when you do that, especially for our young people, Tell yourself, I am somebody. Amen. 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 Reverend Jesse Jackson used to say that. I am somebody. Yeah. I am somebody. Yeah. 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 In spite of what others may think, I am somebody. Why? Because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. So I am. I'm somebody. Amen. I, I'm more than just George and Joseph Tracy's son. Yeah. I'm a child of the king. I am somebody. I'm more than just being, I feel like preaching now. I'm more than just the husband of, of, of Linda K. Beasley. I, I'm more than just a daddy and a grandpa. But I am somebody. I'm more, Lord, help me. I'm more than just the pastor of Mount Tabor. I am right. Right. Yeah. whatever your name is. Yes. You are more yes, Lord. than somebody. Yes. 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 
let me let me let me stop. I got I got excited. That's all right. Let me close out these observations. Many of you already know. Two things I, I found out from one on Friday. Uh, St. Clair County, we know that they uh, are doing mass uh, vaccinations at the St. Clair County, I mean, St. Clair Fairgrounds. And I stated last week they were, a week before last, they were doing those persons, those who signed up to get a vaccine, uh, 75 and older. I found out on Friday. They are now down to those that are 65 and over, as, and especially uh, if you, uh, and then also ages 60 to 64, 65, um, if uh, on that sheet that you filled out, if you have some health issues, uh, such as diabetes or heart disease, uh, being obese like me, uh, yeah. I can say that. Uh, uh, he said, you will or should expect to get some type of communication uh, to get a vaccine if you so desire to get a vaccine. Uh, it's your choice. Amen. And then the last thing I have, uh, as of Thursday, uh, some of the restrictions that we have been under for the state of Illinois has been lifted yeah. to where now we're in phase four. Uh, I'm not gonna go over all of the, uh, the of what has been lifted, but one of the things I will highlight, uh, restaurants, uh, restrictions uh, have been lifted. Uh, I came by, uh, I Becky up there saying, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> she need her middles. I came by Cracker Barrel yesterday. And that parking lot was, yeah, that parking lot was full. Then I came by AHA. Folks were circling the parking lot trying to find a parking space. And then I went up past Denny's. I saw all them seniors coming that, that was either to, coming out or going into Denny. Cause they, they said, look, we tired of being at home. Uh, uh, so uh, the, those restrictions have been lifted to a degree, but also uh, whatever your favorite uh, health and fitness center, uh, those restrictions uh, have been lifted for the most part. I am especially grateful that that part has been lifted uh, because uh, now I can go back to doing water aerobics. All right. Yeah, I can't wait because <laughs> I need to take some of this off. All right. And I can't play ball anymore. I can't run anymore. I can walk, uh, but I but I love water aerobics. And so uh, that's at the Y. So. And then for our churches, some of the restrictions have been lifted to where they're saying now uh, churches can uh, seat 50 people or 50% of their seating capacity. Uh, but let me, uh, um, let me say something on that real quick. I know what, what, where we are at as far as phase four, but we still need to be cautious. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. We still, we still, Amen. we cannot let our guards down. Amen. We still Amen. have to do those things of social distancing, mm -hmm. as Dr. Jerome Jackson would say, physical distance. Mm -hmm. We still need to uh, wash our hands yeah. for at least mm -hmm. 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. uh, we still need to use hand sanitizer. Yeah. Yeah. When we come into church, our urchins take your temperature. Amen. And if you, if you hit 99.4, don't get mad at them. Uh, don't get. Uh, I'm serious. Don't 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 get mad at them. And they said, "Uh oh." I thought when Pee Wee took my temperature, and she said, "Uh oh." I thought so. I thought I was going to Because I looked at. I know Pee Wee said, "Whoops, what's wrong?" With I, I looked at Pee Wee some kind of way. So, Pee Wee, I'm sorry. <laughs> But don't get mad at the urchin if you got a tip to 
Studio 99 4, and they, they, they kindly asked if you would go back home. Uh, we don't want to infect nobody. Because this is, this is, this is, here it is, and I'm sitting down. I, I said on a Zoom uh, training that I had yesterday dealing with uh, the church and COVID-19, this virus, and you've heard me say this before, this virus cares nothing about your color, your skin Amen. color. Amen. It, it does not care nothing about if you say I'm saved and sanctified and filled with the blood of Jesus. I'm hearing folks go running around talking about, but well, I'm all right because I'm covered by the blood. Uh -huh. Well, talk to that virus about how much blood is covering you. That virus cares nothing about that. Right. It cares nothing about your political affiliation. Uh, it's an equal opportunist. But the way to fight it is to do the things that we have been asked to do. Because if we do those things, uh, we're going to get through this. And then when we when they said we can move into phase five, oh, happy. I can't even say that. Oh, happy day. So let, let, let's go on and let's have some church, Becky. Yeah, let's go, let's go, yeah, let's go and have some church, y'all.
2021, Amen. month of February, there is a word from the Lord. All right. Thank you, Lord. The book of Habakkuk. Mm -hmm. The book of Habakkuk. I said that if folks have trouble finding this book, if you can go to Gospel of Matthew, just count back five books. In the book of Habakkuk in the Old Testament, chapter 3. And I just want to look at two, two verses of Scripture, just verse 1 and verse 2. Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. And I'm reading from the King James Bible. A prayer of Habakkuk the prophet upon Shiganoth. O Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known. In wrath, remember mercy. Amen. That's it. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The short time that's ours. I, I just want to use one thought. A new attitude. All right, all right. A new attitude. This morning I failed to, to, to mention, but I'm going to do this now again. I certainly want to acknowledge uh, and, and thank our ushers who uh, greet us on the door with a smile. And, uh, the, the ushers, uh, uh, whatever you need, they, they try to accommodate you. And, and, I, and I certainly appreciate our ushers, uh, to our uh, musicians, Sister Becky, uh, um, and to our uh, this wonderful choir uh, of Mount, Mount Tabor. I, I thank them. Um, to this outstanding uh, media ministry led by Sister Erica. Amen. That's all right. You can give my praise. Yeah. Somebody said, give me my flowers. Yeah. Sister Erica knows her her, uh, her team uh, that help to help us help me to be able to come to you on Facebook and YouTube. Um, uh, speaking of those who are viewing on YouTube and Facebook, especially uh, some folk I ran into throughout this past week uh, who wanted to know how can we pick Mount Tabor up, and I told them where to hit us up at on Facebook, mm -hmm. and, and I said, uh, told them how to hit us up on YouTube. And none of that would be possible uh, without uh, Sister Erica and her team, amen. amen. So again, I thank them. And then, because um, it's the first um, Sunday of, of uh, February, it escapes me, but this does not escape me. We have some persons who are celebrating birthdays uh, during the month of February. Somebody say amen. Who, who got a birthday? Joyce. What's your birthday? The 15th. The 15th. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so <laughs> Oh, boy. Yeah, that's the day after Valentine's Day. And then I know Dr. Lucy Smith. Yes, yeah. uh, 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 she's so uh, she will be celebrating her birthday, and I think Dr. Smith will be 94. 94. Wow. Amen. 95. 95? Mm -hmm. Wow. She will be 95 years young. Yes. Amen. What a Amen. that woman, I don't mean to say it in a, a negative way, but when I say that woman, not because I call her my mom. Um, you talk about a woman with some got some history. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this woman has some yeah. some history. Amen. So uh, uh, yeah, we do. We love her. Uh, uh, yeah, she was some of y'all school teacher. She was different then than how she is now. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She didn't play. <laughs> but that's a shout out to Dr. Smith and to Joyce and those who have a birthday. A new attitude. I knew 
from two Sundays ago um, where the Lord wanted me to go for this Sunday. All right. It was even uh, confirmed last Sunday uh, when Deacon Broden are preaching Deacon. Uh, yeah. When he, he, he bought the word on last Sunday. And when he got towards the end, I, I, I'm going to get to what I'm doing. He got towards the end uh, of, of his message. And I told my wife, I said, when I saw him turn around and, you know, he did this, he got his cup. <laughs> and I saw that. I said, uh oh, it's on now. Because he brought a message on last Sunday. I don't care what nobody said. He brought a message on last Sunday. But it was a couple of things he said, or one of a couple of things that confirmed where the Lord wanted me to go with on this Sunday uh, for today. And this Monday, I had an appointment, my, my routine uh, six-month uh, uh, checkup with my cardiologist. And when I was in the, uh, the waiting room, went to check in, and uh, there was somebody that was sitting there, and uh, uh, I guess it was her, uh, this guy, I guess it was his, his wife, and uh, younger than me, uh, this guy had had uh, he had had recently had a heart attack. And so while we were sitting in the waiting room, I mind him on business. And then all of a sudden he tapped her and he said, uh, baby, what you listening to? Because she had her headphones on and, and you know, she just, you know, you know how she was. I mean, I, I didn't know what she was listening to, but whatever it was, it had her moving. And, uh, and, and when he asked her, he said, baby, what, what, what are you listening to? And she uh, joke, jokingly playing with said, she said, oh, you don't know nothing about this. And uh, she said, because this old school, you, 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 she said, you, 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 don't, you, 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 you don't want none of this. And uh, he said, no, seriously, what, what, what are you listening to? So when she took it off, I could hear it. And uh, Bridget, when I, when I heard heard it, heard what she was listening to, I, I, I heard this, this song uh, uh, that was being played uh, that was sung by the late great, uh, not late, she, she ain't dead, but the great gospel and soul singer Patti LaBelle. Uh -huh. A song that Patti uh, uh, sung back in the day that she still sings today that was titled, I Got a New Attitude. Uh -huh. Uh huh. Y'all yeah, got quiet. Y'all ain't like y'all ain't like y'all ain't been in the club. Some of y'all probably have. Y'all ain't like y'all ain't been in the club and heard. I got a new attitude. Now some of y'all, some some folks act, 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 act like that, that that the only thing they know is church and uh -huh. and and, and sixteen hundred on the AM dial. But then some of y'all uh, uh, listen to some other than a gospel radio station. Amen. Because some of y'all get in y'all car and y'all don't have no gospel station on. And right, right now, uh, if I go and somebody send in somebody's car, uh, if, if you like my car, you got it on 96.3. Yeah, right. uh -oh. <laughs> See, we, we, we got to learn to be honest. Right. Right. I listen to 1600. I listen to 690, okay. but every now and then, uh -huh. I want to listen to some 96.3. Okay. Every now and then, I want to hear some Luther being played. Right. Yeah. Every now and then, yeah, yeah I want to hear yeah. some Commodores being played. Right. Yeah, let me stop. Right. Yeah. Ooh. Right. Uh, yeah. Oh, I know I'm right about it. Yeah, I know I'm right about it, cause cause when you when you at the at the stoplight mm -hmm. and you pull up next to somebody and you got your hand on the steering wheel and you got that brother that's sitting there, there with that one hand, <laughs> you don't know what he's listening to, but you know he listening to something that's causing him uh, to have 
an, an emotional uh, uh, reaction. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's not just, let me say it, it's not just secular songs that causes you to, to rock back and forth. Uh -huh. Uh, uh, but, but, but but we've been in church long enough to know there's a whole lot of secular uh, uh, musical artists that got their start in the church yes, sir. Yes, sir. when they were singing gospel songs. Uh -huh. yeah, right. yeah, I know I'm right about it. Amen. Yeah, but Patty, when she she sung that song, I got a new attitude. Mm -hmm. uh, Erica, I know you two too young to understand that. Uh, those who have heard the song may remember these words. Running hot, running cold. I was running into overload. I never knew I had such a lesson to learn, but but now I'm feeling good from my head to my yeah to my toes. Yeah, I know where I'm going and I know what I need to do since I've tied it up my point of view. Then it's like a ooh 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 ooh. I got a new attitude. I knew something to say. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, many music critics have said that this is a song. Uh, watch out, y'all. That identifies with someone who has been through some of life's most difficult challenges. But when that person uh, uh, took a retrospective look. At their life, they they not only came to their senses, uh, but but now they they've taken on a new attitude. And the more I looked at the words of Patti LaBelle's song, the more the more I saw how this song could be identified with this prophet by the name of Habakkuk. Because three weeks ago, uh, when the Lord led me to present him, I preached on the subject: timing is everything. And then following Sunday, I followed that message up with the subject, God's impeccable timing. All right. And Habakkuk, by all indication, uh, was a prophet who had a, a unique calling on his life in that he did not speak for God to the people like the other prophets, but rather uh, he had a unique way of how he would talk to the Lord about the inner struggles that he was dealing with as he viewed a nation that was complicit and hard-headed, a nation that was stuck on self-aggrandizing and, and had no problems displaying its sinful ways. In other words, Habakkuk, uh, after what he was seeing, Habakkuk, he, he started crying out to the Lord and he said, Lord, how long are you willing to let this jacked up mess go on? Uh -huh. And I don't know about y'all, but, but sometimes after what I saw a month ago, yeah, uh, uh, at the Capitol in D.C. and some of this other stuff that I'm seeing. I sometimes say, Lord, how long are you going to let some of this jacked up stuff go on? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I didn't get an answer on that one. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, the Lord didn't answer me on that. Mm -hmm. And I know why he didn't answer, because the Lord was simply saying, if you read the Bible, my ways aren't your ways. Right. Yeah, yeah, my thoughts aren't your thoughts. Yes, sir. God took me back to that first uh, sermon when he said, uh, time it is everything. God does what he's going to yeah. do in his own time. Uh -huh. And so when I, I looked at this, uh, 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 I, I saw how uh, Abaka, he, he only writes three short chapters. Mm -hmm. And he shows us uh, uh, how one's faith, this chapter one, uh, how one's faith can be put to the test. When it looks like the Lord has closed his ears and does not answer your prayers. In chapter 2, he shares with us that, 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 that when you are in a holding pattern right. while you are waiting on the Lord, he simply suggests to us, just hold on to faith. Yeah. Because a blessing delayed is not a blessing denied. Right. But then in this third chapter, Habakkuk is no longer in denial. Because now it's just him and the Lord. As he enters into a state of jubilation, and that's what chapter 3 is, uh, 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 it, it, it's a state of jubilation. I'm looking at my Bible, it said, it's a praise for the person of God. Yeah, yeah he, 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 he comes to this third chapter in, with a state of jubilation. His, his rearview mirror shows him 
how he's moved from fear to faith. Burdens to blessings, perplexity to praise, confusion to confidence, and worry to worship. And for two chapters, this man of God uh, uh, found it increasingly difficult to turn away from the oppression of the weak and the poor. He could no longer bear to look at the dishonesty and the destruction of the moral fabric of social life. It hurt him to the core to see how God's people had began to identify with little G.O.D.'s instead of the true and living God. So he, he calls out to the Lord over and over and over again. And, and he, he asked the Lord, uh, uh, Lord, will you please do something? Matter of fact, not only will you please do something, he was saying, do something, anything to intervene and, and set things right. Mm -hmm. And when God, when God showed up, God answers when you look at chapter 1. God does begin to answer Habakkuk's prayer. All right. But then, in, but God then uh, uh, furthers his answer, uh, continues his answer uh, to Habakkuk's prayer in chapter 2. And it's in chapter 2, God parenthetically says to Habakkuk, he said, look here, while you, while you crying and, and, and you calling out and, and you, you telling me what I need to do and you, you want to know where am I at and, and you trying to tell me, God, you need to do something. In other words, you know, uh, maybe not y'all, but me, uh, uh, you know how we was growing up and uh, uh, somebody uh, uh, would bother you. Uh, uh, okay, no, 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 that's not, that's, let me rewind that. Let me go back another way. Um, I had a, not I did, we had a dog. We are, I've always grew up with German Shepherds. And uh, when, 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 when our friends would come over to the house and play, we had to put them dogs uh, up in the garage. Because you, you couldn't just come up in that yard, in, in our yard with them dogs. But if somebody did something to me, I tell them in a minute, I'm going to sick my dog on you. <laughs> That's what Abaka was trying to tell the Lord. He wanted the Lord. He was like, Lord, get him. That's what he was saying. Get him. But the Lord, he, 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 he parenthetically says to Abaka, man, you just need to chill somewhere. <laughs> Stand on your watch and wait. And while you're waiting, I want you to see what I'm about ready to say. And God tells Abaka, he said, number one, he said, write the vision, make it plain on tablets so everyone will be able to see what is written because the vision is only for a point in time. And at the end, the vision will speak and not lie, though you may have to wait for it to materialize and come to fruition. Just wait for it because the vision will surely come to pass. Therefore, the judge shall live by his, the judge shall live by faith. So what God was trying to tell Habakkuk, I got this. Mm -hmm. He said, basically, he said, stay in your lane. Right. And that's a word for, uh, 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 for us today that, that sometimes we veer out of our lane. All right. yeah. Yeah. yeah, we get in the other yeah. folks' yeah. lane. Right. Yeah. Somebody looking at me all cockeyed. In other words, we want to get into somebody else's business. Uh -huh. yeah. Instead of minding our own business, we won't get in somebody else's business. Uh -huh. We just need to stay in our lane. Amen. And when it comes to God, I think God knows how to do what God knows how to do. Uh -huh. Habakkuk yeah. having come through after having come through what he what he would say was a long time of being in a holding pattern, says, as much as I want to move on to chapter three. This is what he said, Erica. He said, I, 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 I can't get ahead of myself because if I move too fast, I will inadvertently run past that 20th verse of chapter 2. Somebody said, well, what does that say? I'm glad you want to know. Uh, uh, it, it, it says, George, it says, the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth 
she quiet mm -hmm. before him. Yeah. Okay. In chapter 1, Habakkuk finds himself lamenting to the Lord. His faith is put on trial. In chapter 2, God addresses his concerns and, and let him see a, a faith as a teacher. But now in this third chapter, Habakkuk lets out a sigh of relief. He shows how patience and faith can be triumphant. And it's through this time of prayer and reflection that Habakkuk finally comes to a place of hope and confidence in the Lord that allows him to praise God with rejoicing even as he anticipates the most difficult circumstances of his life. All right. All right. Look one more time at how Habakkuk opens and closes his third chapter. As the curtain lifts on chapter 3, it said a prayer of Habakkuk the prophet upon Shiganoff. Uh, chapter 2 says, Oh Lord, I have heard thy speech. And, uh, and I was afraid. Oh Lord. In other words, he said, Oh, oh, oh Lord, I heard your speech. and I, but, but as I listened to you, I, I literally was standing in awe of all your deeds. So he says, Lord, renew or revive your work in our day and in our time. Make them known, but in wrath. That got me. Y'all do know God got a side of wrath. But he said, but, but in wrath, have mercy. Somebody said, well, what does that mean? Okay. Uh, you remember when you got in trouble? Well, uh, your mama said, you know, I told you not to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mama said, a soft, yeah, no. a hard head. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you got it. Yeah. I remember, and I'm moving up, I remember one time I got in trouble. I know some of y'all said, man, the pastor must have been something else. Yeah. yeah. I remember I got in trouble. His mama said he was. Yeah, my mom, that's my wife. She said, yeah, I tell that time. But anyway, I remember I got in trouble. Uh, I did something. And my mama said, well, she called me out my name. And uh, she said, you little, call me out my name. She said, I'm going to beat that behind. And uh, I'm going to... Because I knew what was coming. But as the day went on, Mama didn't know anything. I'm thinking, look, Mama done forgot. <laughs> yeah, I thought I got away with that. Didn't, didn't, didn't Habakkuk say in wrath? Remember mercy? Uh -huh. I, I'm thinking that, that mama gone. She, she done forgot. I thought her, her anger was over. But when my daddy went to work, mama went to work. She pulled them sheets back. She said, you thought I forgot, didn't you? She said, I start to thinking. And the more my mama was talking, talking about, I just got to thinking. Pow! I was just thinking. And you know I told you, mm, I told you not to. Him. And I'm like, look, I'm calling Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit and my grandmother and my grandfather and my daddy at work calling my daddy and, and calling my, the name of my brother and my sister. And mama said, yeah, you can call them all you want. Then I said, I'm calling the police. And mama said, let me go get the phone. <laughs> but then mama stopped in wrath, in her anger. Uh -huh. Mama had mercy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sometimes we do stuff. And, 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 and we think God ought to take folk out. Uh -huh. But in wrath, yeah. 
God remembers mercy. Yeah. That's why we ought to thank God for mercy. Yeah. Habakkuk closes his third chapter by saying, though the fig tree does not bloom or does not bud, there are no grapes on the vine. Mm -hmm. Though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no fruit mm -hmm. or no food, though, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stall, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm going to be joyful in God my Savior. The sovereign Lord is my strength and he makes my feet like hinds feet. He, he enables me to, to tread on the heights. Another translation says, even though the fig trees are all destroyed, there is neither blossom left nor fruit. Though the olive crops are failed and the fields lie barren, even if the flocks die in the field and the, and the barns are empty, yet I'm going to rejoice in the Lord. I will be happy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will give me the, the, the speed of a deer mm -hmm. and bring me safely over the mountains. Uh, initially, Habakkuk was crying out to the Lord. He, he's upset. He's mad at what he's seeing. He did not understand why God would allow all of this calamity and all of this sinfulness to go on. But then when God talked to him in chapter 2, God gives him an answer, but it wasn't exactly the answer that Habakkuk was looking for. So as God continues, there it is, as God continues to work on Habakkuk, continue to work on him, his mind. Uh, when we come to chapter 3, Habakkuk now has a new attitude because now in Habakkuk 3, he's about ready to shout. Matter of fact, he closes with a shout. I'm about ready to take my seat. This prophet, he didn't doubt God's existence. He just wondered about God's presence. So with everything that had gone on, he was wanting to know if the Lord was anywhere to be found. Mm -hmm. This third chapter is a prayer uh -huh, where Habakkuk basically answers his own question. When he does, he emerges at a place of faith and confidence rather than doubt and fear. So I looked at this, then I looked at it again, and, and basically the first thing I saw was just like Habakkuk. We as the church should always approach God with an attitude of reverence, worship, and praise. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and then go back to worship. So when I, I looked at this prayer, I saw this word, Shiganoff. Mm -hmm. uh -huh, I know you saw it too, Shiganoff. I, I discovered that although this is a word, uh, the origin is unknown. Mm -hmm. But it's a word that denotes uh, some kind of musical term. Yeah. So when we look at this third chapter, we need to look at it from the standpoint of a prayer that's interlaced or interacted with a psalm or a worship song. Mm -hmm. yeah. This prayer, my brother and sister, was not only a written prayer, but it was also a musical prayer mm -hmm. where Abaka asked, can I just teach and uh, 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 where Habakkuk, as the author, he takes the time to think about what he wanted to say. And once he thinks about what he wanted to say, then he writes it down. Mm -hmm. Not only is a musical prayer a written prayer, but it's also a poem. Because not only does poetry use its condensed and heightened language, but it requires some form of composition. Therefore, the words are carefully chosen, not only for its content, but also for its imagery, its rhythm, and its rhyme. Uh, that's why I don't understand. Yeah. Uh, uh, when folk come into church, <clears throat> choir singing uh, from the bottom of their heart. Mm -hmm. When folk come in church, Come on, y'all. Well, 
Becky done got happy. Come on. Baby. It's time to move on. But here's the thing. If you were like Habakkuk when he comes to this third chapter, he begins to look back where God had bought him, not only where God had bought him from, but what God has brought him through. And when he looks at where God brings him from, looks at where God or how God has brought him through, he can't help it but to praise God. He can't help but to have a musical prayer. So, so, so he says, Lord, I, I've heard of your fame. I've heard of your speech. He said, I heard what our ancestors have said about you. He said, every time I hear what's been said about your awesomeness, and he said, when I come face to face uh, with your awesomeness, he says, I just literally just stand in awe of your deeds. Mm -hmm. He says, when I saw all of this, he said, because I now have a new attitude. Mm -hmm. He said, I was literally stopped in my tracks. Right. And I was brought down to my knees. So he said, Lord, just renew or revive your works in us the same way you worked among those who came before us. Mm -hmm. Two chapters ago, Habakkuk prayer was filled with one complaint after another. And there's nothing wrong with bringing your questions and complaints to the Lord because the Lord wants us to be honest with him. Yes. But can I suggest that if you want to be in God's presence and want to know, I should say when you come into God's presence and you want to know God's presence, this is how you do it. Start with worship. Mm -hmm. Just teaching. That's all I'm doing right now. I'm just, I'm just teaching because we're coming back to this third chapter next week. Amen. Being in the presence of the Lord and hearing from the Lord had given Habakkuk a new attitude because he knows that the focus of worship is God. Mm -hmm. And worship has a way of affecting us in such profound ways because it has the ability both to inform us as well as to transform us. When we gather to worship, our gathering should have nothing to do with what somebody has on. It has nothing to do with the ills of this world. It has nothing to do with the latest nighttime soap opera drama. But rather, when we gather for worship, it should be about remembering who God is yes. and what God has done in our lives. Preach, Pastor. Amen. I think I'm Amen. Amen. Yeah. Worship, my brother and sister, it includes the proclamation yes. of God's word. And yes. yet, worship is more than reading scripture uh -huh. or listening to a sermon. Uh -huh. For some folk, music is their favorite part of worship. Right. And I can understand why, since God has blessed Mount Tabor with a tremendous and talented musician and choir, but yet worship is more than the music of the songs that are sung. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We incorporate prayer in the worship experience, and yet worship is more than just the prayer. Folks come to church from near and far on YouTube and Facebook for worship to happen. And yet worship is more than just a gathering. Uh -huh. But rather worship is more than the sum of its parts. Can I just go on and say it as I go to my seat? No wonder Bishop Trotter could sing with conviction and clarity when he said, All the things that I've been through. You couldn't feel my pain, what I had to go through to get here. You'll never understand my praise. So don't try to figure it out because my worship is for real. He said, I've been through too much not to worship him. There's somebody sitting in here this morning. 
just like you have been through the storm and the rain. Uh -huh. I just like you have cried out to the Lord in the midnight hour. Yes. He said, I just like you grumbled and complained and wondered where was God in the midst of this chaos and calamity yes. that seems to be on every side. Uh -huh. And he said, uh, uh, I, 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 I just like you had my patience and my faith put to the test. Uh -huh. But then the Lord showed up. He's talking about Tabor in this letter. He said, but then the Lord showed up. Uh -huh. And he said, why were you tripping? Because I've been there all the time. Mm -hmm. Now that you got all that complaining out your system, yeah. now that you dropped that weight of anger, frustration, and bitterness, yeah. uh, he said, hold on to your hat. Because uh, why you're trying to figure it out? God said, I, "I've already, I've already worked it out." And while I was working things out, God said, uh, "I was trying to give you a, a new attitude." And that's a word for us this morning, that we are in God's holy temple. I know we in the sanctuary of God, but this sanctuary does not belong to us. But this sanctuary, it belongs to God. Because the sanctuary is God's holy temple. So he said, let all the earth be silent before him. So Habakkuk said, the question that Mount Tabor needs to ask is, how do you worship? And he said, how? Do I praise God in the midst of a dry spell? Oh, yeah. Well, one songwriter said, you are the Lord. Another one said, you are the famous one. Another one said, great is your name. Another one said, the heavens declare that you are Glory, I feel my help now. Another one said, Great is your fame. I just stop by to let you know when the Holy Spirit laid a new attitude on me. I saw God as an awesome God. I saw God as a magnificent God. I saw God as a mighty God. I saw God as all powerful. I saw God as a loving God. I saw God as a righteous God. I saw God as a wise God. I saw God as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I'm talking about uh, when he gave me uh, a new attitude. Uh, I saw God uh, yeah. as the only God uh, that I should honor and praise uh, from now and forevermore. But Patty the Bell said, uh, I'm running hot and I'm running cold. Yeah. Patty said, 
I was running in the overload. She said, I never knew I had such a lesson to learn. But she said, I'm feeling good from my head to my toes. I know where I'm going and I know what I need to do. Since I tied it up, my point of view, ooh, 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 ooh. I got a new attitude. I can say this morning, I run hot and I run cold. I run all over load. I had lessons that life taught me. I haven't always felt good from my head to my toes. I haven't always known which way to go. But once I met Jesus, yes, sir. Once I met Jesus, oh, oh, then he changed me. When I met him, he changed my walk. When I met him, he changed my talk. When he met Jesus, he changed me from the top of my head down to the soles of my feet. When I met Jesus, I said he's worthy, worthy to be praised. Is there anybody here that know that you know that when God changed your attitude, you don't talk the same way. You don't walk the same way. You don't do the things that you used to do. Because you got a new attitude. When folks see you, they'll say, why you're so happy? I'm happy with Jesus alone. Is there anybody here that can say, I love him? I love him. When God gives you a new attitude, yeah. when He gives you, yeah. Yeah. when He gives you, when God gives you, I'm trying to leave yeah. this way. Come on. Yeah. When God gives you a new attitude, you can be just like Habakkuk. You can start praying, yeah. telling the Lord yeah. what you don't like, yeah. telling the Lord. I, what you're going through uh, when you're praying uh, and you're talking to the Lord. Uh, sometimes uh, God won't just uh, directly answer you, uh, but sometimes uh, when you're praying, uh, God will uh, take you to the upper room. Uh, God will uh, take you to the Shekinah glory. And when you, uh, you're finished praying, uh, God will will uh, give you a praise. Uh, God will uh, give you a worship experience. Uh, God will. Uh, yes, he will. How do you know, Pastor? I'm glad you want to know. This is how I know I had a new attitude. I'm but This is how I knew. I had a new attitude. My mama made us Go to church. Uh -huh. Yeah. When I went into the military, I strayed away uh -huh. from the church. Yeah. Uh -huh. Wasn't thinking nothing about the church. Uh -huh. When I met my wife, yeah, yeah although, yeah, uh -huh. I was hanging out in the clubs. Uh -huh. Come on now. But when I met my wife, uh -huh. my wife was a church goer. Uh -huh. When we start dating, mm -hmm. I never said nothing to my wife about going to church. Right. And she never said nothing to me about you need to stop what you're doing. Right. But it wasn't until God helped me today. God. God. It wasn't until. God. Uh -huh. Yeah. God. It wasn't until. Yeah, I had a stroke on my left side. Couldn't move my arms. 
and I could not move my feet. Couldn't feel nothing on my left side. I couldn't even talk. And the only way I could communicate was when the nurses would ask me a question. If I wanted to say yes, I would blink once. If I wanted to say no, I would blink twice. But there was this old white preacher that came into my room and he looked at me digging broad and he got ready to walk out the room. And then that old man, he turned back around and he came to the foot of my bed. He said, you knew Jesus, but you walked away. And he said it one more time. In my mind, I was saying, if this old man don't get up out of my room, if I could talk, I would tell him more. Uh, that may the Lord watch uh, between me and me. Uh, that old man uh, was making a whole lot of sense uh, because when the doctor said uh, he may not walk again, uh, when the doctor said uh, he may not use uh, his left arm and hands again, uh, when the doctor said uh, he may not talk again, uh, but when I start uh, getting feeling in my legs, uh, getting feeling in my hands uh, getting feeling in my feet uh, when I start uh, saying words uh, and going to physical therapy and uh, going to speech therapy I told the Lord uh, I do uh, whatever it is uh, he will want me to do uh, I start by to tell you uh, I had uh, a new attitude uh, and ever since then uh, I I don't mind uh, praising his name. Uh, I don't mind uh, calling Jesus, uh, Jesus, uh, the lily of the valley. Uh, Jesus, uh, the rose of Sharon. Uh, Jesus, uh, that bright and morning star. Uh, Jesus, uh, who was led to Golgotha. Uh, Jesus, uh, that was hung up for my hangups. Uh, Jesus, uh, who died on an old rugged cross. Uh, Jesus, uh, who was buried in a ball tomb. Uh, Jesus, uh, who got up on the third day. Uh, Jesus, uh, I thank you this morning. I got a prayer praise right now. I got a prayer worship praise. I got a praise worship prayer. I got a prayer praise worship. And I just want to tell somebody I'm ready to celebrate. I'm ready to celebrate Jesus. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. I'm through. I'm through. If you're here, somebody online, you don't know, Lord, in the parts of your sin, we give you this opportunity. You get to know why I get so happy about this Jesus. Get to know why Becky when she start playing and singing. Why she gets so happy. Those are the churches on the floor.
saying this cup is the new testament in my blood this do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me 
people as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show uh, the Lord's death till he comes. Uh -huh. Amen. He said, wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But then he said, let a man examine themselves. And so let them eat of that bread and drink of their cup. Um, this about the Lord's Supper is actually 1 Corinthians chapter 17, uh, verses 17 through 34. We, um, and I want to thank uh, Sister Diane, thank our ushers, for those who are in the sanctuary, you already have um, your cup. Declared, 
It's either going to be the Chiefs or Tampa Bay. I'm here tonight. It's going to be one of the two. I'm here tonight. I'm here tonight. I'm here tonight. Somebody said the Chiefs, That's somebody right. said, I ain't heard nobody say Tampa Bay. I said Seattle. Oh, yeah. Just the organist. It's going to be one of them. Right. So let us, let us get up out of here, let's get y'all home, so y'all can, uh, if it wasn't so cold outside, Deacon Broden, I, I do the clap, if it wasn't so cold outside, <laughs> oh, I would fire up that grill. <laughs> it's too cold. Amen. The church say amen. Amen.